All right, let's talk about equilibria. Equilibria in uh, these log of Volterra dynamics. This is one of the most useful practical things that comes out of, of uh, analyzing these kinds of models or, or thinking about them. The question that I want to confront here is, when should we expect coexistence of species? That's a really useful thing to know. Um, why do species coexist in forest stands or in other ecological settings? And um, when should we expect that to be maintained? Understanding that basic uh, kind of dynamic helps us uh, predict when we will have competition with species that we might want to increase, say in a timber setting, or when we can protect and maintain biodiversity within stands by leveraging these kinds of dynamics. Okay, so it's, it's a value to us. So let's look at two cases of coexistence within species, and there's two different kinds of equilibria that um, emerge within Lacta Volterra dynamics. So uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna draw on here our, um, our isoclines. Again, they're really uh, helpful for us. And um, what I do is I first identify the carrying capacity, the intraspecific species effect uh, of um, our first species. And I'm going to draw in here the interspecific species co uh, competitive effects for the second species as well. The K, parameter K1 and parameter K2. Okay, now for the interspecific species competitive effects. What we need to do here is determine or illustrate the effect of species two on species one and vice versa. So let's complete the isocline for species one. It's gonna be the carrying capacity of species one divided by its interspecific species or competitive parameter. And then we're gonna add the same one, same one here for the uh, corresponding one for species two. K2 divided by delta. All right, and now we can draw our isoclines. So species one, we're going the uh, intraspecific species limit on its intraspecific species limit on its interspecific species limit, and then uh, the corresponding uh, relationship for species two. Okay, so it looks like this. So let's think about the space space. When we're above the isoclines up here in this quadrant, again, this is has this has four quadrants, just like the predator prey dynamic. Um, this has four quadrants, and in each one of those, a different thing is going to be happening. All right, so up here, we're above the um, intraspecific species competitive effect, the carrying capacity for each of these species. And therefore, we're above the isocline, we're above, beyond the carrying capacity, and both of these populations are going to decrease. When we're down in this quadrant, again, we're below carrying capacity for species one and species two, so they're both going to increase. They're going to go up. All right. Now, the trick here becomes what happens in these other two phase spaces. Uh, when we're here, we are above the carrying capacity for species two. It's going to decrease. And we are going to be in kind of a funny place here um, for species one. Let's see, it's actually going to be, um, it's actually going to be increasing, but what's going to happen here is this, uh, these two forces are actually going to push the system this way. They're going to push it towards this, um, this, this point where the two lines intersect. The same thing is going to happen here. They're going to, we're uh, above the carrying capacity for species one and below it for species two, uh, but they're going to, um, the, the populations are going to grow this way. This is called stable equilibrium. Um, uh, it is uh, a, an, an event that can happen when intraspecific species competition is stronger than intraspecific species competition. It's one of those things, you have a 50-50 chance and um, you know it's easy to get them mixed up. But, and this is at least true within these models and seems to happen in nature as well, that when the intraspecific species competitive effects are greater than interspecific species competitive effects, 
we tend to have stable equilibria, stable equilibria populations. They're competing more within themselves than they are with each other, and that uh, can create stable coexistence. Now, let's switch this around. Let's remove the um, intra-specific competitive effects. Um, so we have very relatively high carrying capacities. And then shift this such that most of the competition, the limiting of competition, is from inter-specific species competitive effects. So what's going to happen here? We've got to, this is K1 divided by lambda, and then down here we've got K2 divided by delta. What happens here? Well, we can draw our ice lines. We go like this. In a very trivial way, they look quite similar, but the growth is going to be different here in a very important way. First yeah, off, um, when, are, when, when you're in, again, you have four phases here. So, um, and when you're up here, we're above all, we're above both isoclines, so population growth is going to be negative. It's going, both populations are going to shrink, and then if we're down here, both are going to uh, increase. Now, these two spaces are kind of particular. When we're here, we are above the interspecific species limits for species two, but we're below the carrying capacity. And that means that this population is going to grow this way. It's going to grow towards the carrying capacity of its first species. Likewise, when we're in this phase phase, uh, the system is going to grow towards the carrying capacity of species two. At this um, intersection, we have what's called a, an uh, unstable equilibrium. It's an equilibrium. It's a place where both species are coexisting. But it's coexistence that's akin to standing on the head of a pin. There's a balance there, but it's um, in uh, some sort of strange uh, kind of in infinity space where uh, there is a balance there, but it's so small, it's uh, infinitesimally small. These are still, this may seem like, uh, well, this is an example where you can have competitive exclusion if the system shifts one way or another. Essentially, if you have too many of species one, or there's um, initially you have more than one species one, or you have a disturbance or some other change that shifts resources such that you have more species one, you can have competitive exclusion. You'll have a simplification of the system. The same thing can happen with species two. Uh, but um, what can also happen is that because the environment is dynamic, the, these uh, dynamics can be shifting over time. And this can, can be a useful way or an important way that biodiversity is maintained within um, natural populations. When the normal variation in the environment in ecological interactions create shifting dynamics, um, you know, it forces uh, exerted on the system from outside of it, it can still be a mechanism for maintaining biodiversity.